Hello and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. And I'm also your host, Noelle McAvoy. And it's a different kind of show today. Yes, we're sitting down. Yes, we're sitting. Yes, I'm so excited. Yes, and we don't have any headphones oh. on, so uh, yeah, we don't we even know if we anything. can even hear ourselves. We can hear ourselves talk here, but... It's great. Yeah, so we're kind of actually running the board, too, here, because mm -hmm. that's usually how we do a show. We, we, yeah. we usually run everything that's on our show, like kind of like technical it's a, stuff. It's a two-man show. On our show. But one yeah. man, one woman show. Yeah, it's been smoky the last couple of days. So we're just mm -hmm. gonna uh, let's banter for a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna banter <laughs> for a little bit. So if you guys want to check out the weather, you can always go to the National Weather Service because yes. we don't have weather up, obviously. But it's been smoky. It'll probably be a little warmer. Yeah. But I think the it's biggest summer. news is that apparently Glacier National Park is gonna have some snow this weekend. So they were just on fire, and now it's going to snow. Yeah. Great. Yeah, but we Great. have a whole bunch of guests here today. We do. Um, yep, Fringe Fest is happening in Missoula this week. We've mm -hmm. got uh, Michelle Rizzo here with us again, talking about Fringe Fest. And we've got several different artists on today um, chatting with us about their performance. And so that's why we get to sit, because we're going to chat. Yeah, yeah, so thanks, Michelle, for joining us. Yeah. I have Hello. Again. Yes. Really really and so what exactly is Fringe Fest? Fringe Fest is a performing arts platform for burgeoning artists who want to sh dis have their shows on, on stage. And um, so it's rapid fire, fast paced theatrical performances and musical performances. We have a variety of shows this year, over 40 acts in 13 venues and over six days. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get the idea to start this? Well, I lived in England for two years and um, I visited Edinburgh, Scotland, which is where Fringe Fest began in 1947. And um, we, and I, I moved to Vancouver, BC, where they have a, ver a very vibrant Fringe Festival. And when I moved back to Missoula in 2010 with my small children and my husband, I um, wanted to explore ways I could use my talents. So um, I thought of the Fringe, because Missoula is such a rich hotbed of art. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of artists and, and venue owners, so um, it just kind of worked out. Great. So, what what gets you pumped up about Fringe Fest? What what about it really um, resonates with you? Yeah. Well, um, it's it's a uh, it's non jury, non selective, and uncensored. So anybody can do anything within a time span of one hour if they're using our venue, a venue that we procure, or um, they can find their own, bring their own venue, and they the restrictions are less and that it's affordable and it's a low risk opportunity for both the audience and as well as the performers. And mm -hmm. I think when you have the freedom like that, a non-jury, non-selective, uncensored, um, you can say whatever you want to say. And not often do we have that platform for people who have um, things they want to express. Yeah, it seems like more you have to be like a bigger name, like no different people to get onto a stage right. rather than just being able to do it. Right. That's awesome. And I think that when um, revolutions all, all begin with this platform of I can say what I need to say. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, tell, talk about some of the events that are happening this week. Uh, you guys started last night. Last night. Okay, and um, how long are you guys going to go on for? Uh, up until the last show is on Sunday, and it's um, so we start the actual performances this evening um, with uh, at the Crystal Theater with uh, uh, Rebecca Schaefer's Viscosity Theater's performance of Fish and Beauregard, and then we end with Fish and Beauregard on Sunday at the Crystal Theater. But tonight we also have Porch Fest where we paired up performers with porches <laughs> on the 200 and 300 block of South Fourth Street West. So um, for dinner tonight, grab a picnic um, and grab your lawn chair and come join us on South 4th Street West, the 200 and 300 block. And from 5.30 until um, 9.30, we have uh, live music. Um, uh, each, each half hour or hour, it's a different porch. And um, then also at the Dunrovin Ranch this evening, very exciting. Um, happy to have them on board there in Lolo. And, um, they have Shane Klaus, they're hosting Shane Klaus, mm -hmm. who's of course a, a celebrated musician here in Missoula, and he'll be performing from his new album, Solo, um, uh, I, can't, it's a, I can't remember the title of 
his new album, Pardon Me. But for an album. <laughs> <laughs> It'll but come there's, yeah. there's a whole bunch of um, wonderful events, and people yeah. can pick up their pamphlets. Uh, where can mm -hmm. they pick up all these, um, this little booklet? You have to come to one of the venues. Oh, great. <laughs> you can like, come by MCAX, I'll leave you some. Oh, great. But there's also online a PDF form of it. And I just oh, want to say one other thing at Dunrobin Ranch is reserve champion, and you'll meet Chris. He's out in there waiting to have his turn. And um, from LA, and he'll be. Um, live broadcast over the website of Dunrobin Ranch. Wow. Oh, cool. Yes, his one-man show, Reserve Champion, and I'll let him tell you about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we have a later. lot of guests happening, coming on our show today we as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have some PSAs to show, mm -hmm. um, but until then, we have some new programming happening tonight, and we like to do the next couple nights on MCAT, and Great. here they are. The whole idea of a CSA is you pay early in the season or before the season even starts when they're planting and then you get produce throughout the, the season. Um, and it, it's very difficult to have your, your SNAP benefit be able to do that. You can't pay a lump sum ahead of time and then get installments. So um, that's one of the, the projects that we're working on um, at the uh, Western Montana Growers Co-op, CSA is also um, trying this as a pilot to encourage more people to use CSAs, um, but having to modify their program in order to allow that to happen. Hey, welcome back. Hello, um, we're here with Leslie. Hi. Hey, Leslie. Okay, hi. so uh, tell us about yourself, Leslie. Um, I am from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do solo performance, um, playwright, director, actress. Um, I produce shows, and um, what else? I'm Filipino. Great. It's white Montana. <laughs> <laughs> and so you are here doing a one-woman show. Yes. So tell us about that. So my show is entitled B, Jesus plus drugs equals beauty. Obviously Montana knows nothing about drugs. So. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> no, so it's, know, yeah. it's basically nothing. my personal testimony about how God brought me out of drug addiction. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I bet that's really powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's wow. really intense. Um, I play like a million characters. Um, the main character is God, who isn't like God. It's God is a fairy-like English woman who takes seven different drugs through rehab. So the drugs are actually going through rehab, and they're telling the story about B, who is who is representative of me and her boyfriend Ben and their story through drugs. Oh, so it's kind of wow. like a representation of each drug addiction and their. Their subsequent um, withdrawals and yeah. Um, overcoming. Yeah. So the drugs are letting go of the people. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. That sounds really great. Yeah. And so, um, where is your show going to be played? Where are you performing? I am performing at the Crystal Theater okay. at five thirty on Friday, okay. and at the Roxy Theater three on um, Saturday at four thirty or four and seven. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. And then so can you give us a hint of like what are some of the different drugs that you'll be like that are in your show? There's seven of them okay. actually and I've done all of them. All seven. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, I love that. The, the number seven, is that significant towards like the seven deadly sins? Yes, Comparing exactly. the sins to the... Yes, exactly. Okay. Drugs. Okay. Exactly. So it's a seven step um, rehab program instead of 12 steps. Okay. So the seven steps go through the seven deadly sins. Wow. And each drug is connected to a seven de one of the seven deadly sins. That's going to be so great. Yeah, that's a, that's a great concept. Yeah, that yeah. is a how, great concept. Like, how many um, places have you performed this before you come in here? Um, I performed at the Hollywood Fringe. So um, this is my second stop. And hopefully, my, my goal is to tour it around the country um, and then around the world. Wow. Cool. And you had a um, quite a time getting here. You, yeah. uh, <laughs> you took the Greyhound bus. Yes, <laughs> the Greyhound. The good old Greyhound bus. 30 hours. Oh. 30 hours on the Greyhound. Um, I went from Los Angeles 
to Las Vegas, to Salt Lake City, to Buttes, and then to here. Ah, oh, Butte. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, like, that's the last thing about Montanans, is that, like, when, when it first says Butte, it was like, oh, Butte. <laughs> but yeah. so that always seems to be the case. <laughs> I, I have no idea what that means, but I'm laughing. <laughs> You know, like you probably have a like you're sitting in your stairs like oh um northerners. Yeah, <laughs> Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but this is, seems like a good show. Do you have yeah. any um do you have like a little teaser, like any line you wanna kinda like portray, just kinda like get people a little excited for it? Um Can you be like one of the drugs? Oh, oh, let me see. Um what is what uh, people love crystal. Oh, people yeah. love crystal because crystal is kind of like I. I always see crystal. Um, it, it's crystal meth, mm -hmm. and people love crystal. People mm -hmm. are like, I. I want. I want to meet Crystal because she's kind of like my Marilyn Monroe, mm -hmm. you know. She's mm -hmm. I. I always think of Marilyn Monroe when I do Crystal. She's she's very much like, hi. I'm Crystal, <laughs> you know, and she's she's so like she she she's she's very um, like I see Crystal Meth as kind of like like a like a higher class drug, <laughs> you know, like like people people um, that that do Crystal Meth kind of. Um, are more well. I'm not not not, not, not honest, no, no, no. But, but it's kind of kind kind of like a designer drug, you know. And I'm, at least from what my my experience is like, um, my experience. Oh yeah, I do a lot That's, of drugs. No. But but it's it's kind of like um, uh, like a designer drug, and and people um, that do it are more high class or something or yeah i mean that's the the is the, the, is, the stereotype so one of the the sin that's, that's associated so with crystal is um would that be lust yes exactly because like, i thought it was like because marilyn Monroe is like yeah. all the love. and that's so interesting because like the way that montana perceives meth is so different mm. that's not like you don't call it crystal meth. no we just and it's not meth, meth. and it's like and, meth. It's, and it's not it's like, the high class like you're not you know if you were like high society high class here mm -hmm. you wouldn't be doing meth yeah. you'd definitely mm -hmm. be doing something else mm -hmm. yeah and so it's always like the real like impoverished families or like low poverty but and on that's, reservation it's that's highlighted meth. mostly in a lot of rural areas yeah. in Montana mm -hmm. but a lot of times there's yes. I think it's mostly get swept under the rug in like uh -huh. bigger cities it's not as um, yes. seen mm -hmm. as much or even mm -hmm. talked about as much in the the cities like Missoula and all that, yeah. but that doesn't mean it does not exist. Exactly. Mm. So that's very interesting that it's more of like a high class thing there mm. than it's so different here. Mm. Huh. Interesting. It is interesting. Okay. So one more time before yeah. we go, um, before we move on <laughs> to the next guest, um, tell us when and where you're going to be performing this. So Friday, it's at the Crystal Theater at 5:30, mm -hmm. and then Saturday it's at the Roxy Theater three at four and seven. Awesome. And then can people look up like more of your work on YouTube or anything like that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you? But it's it's not PG thirteen. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Adults only, everyone. Adults only, definitely. And um, just look up Leslie Assistio. L e s l e y. A S I S T I O. Great. So I have a lot of different videos on YouTube. Great. Thank and you very much, Leslie. There's a link to them on our website. Awesome. ZootownFringe.org. Great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you guys. So who do we have up next? I think we've got Anna Buxton from the Missoula Art Museum is up next. All right. We'll be right back, everyone. We'll be right here. Ugh. You may pump up this, you know, this product, you know, $400, $400 more, but you're going to the them, they're the winner. You know, if you're going to ever do a contest where you put a percentage off on a balloon or anything, you know, from 10 to 50% off, you never start at 10. You always start at 15. Because somebody pops it, they say 15%, they feel they're better than 10%. So they're, they're already a winner. Have you ever heard of seeding a parking lot? Car dealers seed a parking lot. You're walking, uh, you're, they're out of their outer lot, rather. Uh, you're walking through their lot looking at cars. You find a quarter on the ground. Aren't you going to think it's your lucky day? And you can expect to see that program happening. I think it's on a Thursday night. Is it's, it? And, and, and I think it's a, I, think I shot that, and yeah. it's probably one of the, um, 
of really good lectures I've seen because it's all about selling and how, oh, to, nice. how to be a better salesman. Market and like, yourself. Yeah, and selling. And one of the things is that they were talking. Oh, sorry, kick the mic. But one of the things, uh, one of the people said that they really liked the customer service at oh, Taco Del Sol. Oh, good. I yeah. know. Someone like represented it. So yeah, we have great customer yeah. service. I pride yeah. myself on that yeah. for sure. All right, but what I pride myself on yeah. is in is on Segway is um, the Missoula AG. I mean, not Missoula Asian <laughs> Service. Oh, sorry, the Missoula Art Museum because I love. The art museum, for sure, it's and you early. can tell that a city, a city like Missoula, has always supported the Missoula Art Museum for all these years, mm -hmm. all so much. Yeah. And this is Anne. Yes, Anna. 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 Yeah. Anna. Oops, sorry, Anna. You're fine. Um, and then so tell you are the development associate from the Missoula Art Museum, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so tell us what your role in the Fringe Fest is. Um, well, we were approached by Jerry Hodgkins um, a while ago, and he pr produced this play. Um, and said uh, the play Art um, in Idaho for a museum in Idaho and said, you know, we have this all rehearsed. Um, if you'd like to host it at the Missoula Art Museum. And we thought the Fringe Festival would be a great venue to, to perform it. So we um, worked it with him and a couple other local actors, Jeremy Shear and Nick Spear. And they're gonna put it on um, for, the, for the Fringe Festival tonight. Awesome. Great, and so it's what is it? It's like a the play is called Art, okay, and it's great. going to be a staged reading. Um, so it's kind of funny talking about a play called Art when we're working <laughs> in an art museum. Yeah. So we have to always say, you know, the, the play Art um, instead of just having Art at the art museum. Um, <laughs> so it's a play by Yasmina Reza, um, and it's a three-person um, reading. And the the basic concept is one of the characters spends a ton of money on a painting that he's really excited about. Wow. And it's an all white canvas. Um, <laughs> so he shows his friends and one of them is like, what the heck did you, what are you doing? This is crap. And so the whole discuss, the whole play is a discussion on art, the meaning of, that, of art, the value of art, you know, what is art. How interesting. Wow. What a cool concept. Yeah. And we're excited because we were able to, um, like the the gallery that we're going to perform it in, um, the, the art just came down off the wall. So it is going to be an all white um, gallery. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. Get to, get to uh, experience it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's wonderful. And like people ask, like um, I'm assuming that you know, like I, I've heard the same kind of concept, like a lot of people buying like the blank um, canvas, or uh -huh. like it's not blank. There's mm -hmm. white paint on it. Right. Yeah. So a lot of times people like to say it's like it's a rabbit in a snowstorm. Mm, yeah. Like there that. you That's go. A good one. There you go. Kind There's gonna be a lot of rabbits in a huge snowstorm tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what art room is it in? It's in a um. It, which gallery? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So it's um. It's called our the Arresti Gallery. So when you you walk into the museum um, somebody will you know direct you to the right space so um, it's where Andy Warhol's um, mm -hmm. photographs oh. just came down yeah so um, it's kind of a unique gallery in that there's steps involved um, so there's two separate rooms and it's going to be a really intimate performance it's limited seating um, so you'll be right up next to the actors performing yeah. that's awesome and so how many tickets are available for that um, we can sell about 30 to 40 tickets Great. Yeah, when I ever think about art, I mean, like, whenever I go to, like, you know, you do the first Friday thing, first Friday thing is a great thing to just kind of, like, open your doors and just mm -hmm. let everyone just kind of flow yeah. in and flow out. Mm -hmm. I always like to read the um, artist note more than actually look at the, not the art. I'm just oh, like, yeah. art, 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 art. <laughs> the, once in a while, because the art that catches my eye, but a lot of times I'm just wandering around, and, I, you know, I don't... Because, um, I don't know, I, I'm just used to seeing things a lot faster. Yeah. And right. I just like to look, 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 look. Yeah. And then just like to move on and to let it see. But then there's always that one piece of art that just really just like, boom. And I just have to stop and look at it. Because some of the details, there's more in the art. There's like art within the art that uh, that I can see. And I think that's wonderful that a lot of, um, that the Missoula Art Museum is able to bring to our community from, mm -hmm. I think, um, I think his name is Spritzer. Spritzer has a... Oh, wait, Spr what's uh, yeah. Springer? Springer? Schnitzer? Jordan Schnitzer? Yes, Jordan yeah. Schnitzer. He was yeah. one of my favorite guests. He has uh, yeah, he he's a, donated a, a great collection yeah. of, of um, prints that came here about a year ago. Not only awesome. is his art really good, but he also has some great things to say about it, too. Yeah, yeah. he's a very, very educated guy, good collector. How much are your tickets for the show tonight? $12. If you're a man member, they're only 10 Oh, 
Nice, that's not bad. And then yeah. what time does it start? It starts at 6.30. If you want to arrive a little bit early and look around, um, we'll have the doors open at 6. Great. Right. And then where can people find more information? MissoulaArtMuseum.org, or you can call us at 406-728-0447. Awesome. Right. Well, cool. thank you for joining us, Anna. Yeah. Thank you. And um, who is up next? We've Noah? got, I think we're going to bring Chris out next. Yeah, Great. Chris will be next. So we'll be right back after this. By the merits of my generosity and so forth, may I attain the state of Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, to we're here. So we have. We're here with. <laughs> this is a quick transition. Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> we're here not with uh, yet. <laughs> Chris Peeler. Yes. And he's here to talk all about. Um, His one man show. Yeah. Yeah. Reserve so yeah, so we kind of touched on it earlier. Um, it's called Reserve Champion, and it's going to be at the Durnovan Ranch tonight. Dunrobin. Dun. Oops. <laughs> yeah, so we're doing a. So it's a. It's a show about me growing up riding show ponies in Pennsylvania and being one of the very few boys who was doing that and all of the ridiculous things that happened to me. And I was gonna bring the show here and I got talking to Michelle and she said, oh, we should do it at a ranch because horses That's are there. That's the best the show's place about to do horses it. horses and ponies. And so we're doing this special show at Dunrovin where there's gonna be music starting at six and there are gonna be tapas and wine and beer and you can go and eat and drink and music at six, my show at seven and then like hang out and watch the sunset at the ranch. Oh, that sounds great. Yes. And so they're going to live stream it, right? And they're also, yes, they're live streaming it. They have a number of, of cameras there that they had, I think, originally set up so people could watch the Ospreys. And they actually... <laughs> true. People love that here. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge thing. I, had, I didn't know, but now I know. And I Seniors love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Love, the, love the Osprey. Yeah, everyone loves those All old the birds. All older crowd yeah. loves yeah. Great, yeah. those yeah. crazy and so birds. that's exactly my demographic. Because <laughs> that's perfectly what I'm looking for. And so, yeah, they're going to they're gonna be live streaming it. I actually have, uh, selfishly, a couple of friends who are going to be watching it. One, one in New York, yes. one in Colorado. You know, because when you're doing theater like you this, have to. It's yeah. hard for you know people aren't going to come from New yeah. York to Los Angeles yeah. just to see a play that's running for a little period of time. But so I have friends around the country who are going to watch it, and I hope that a lot of people will come up and see it. It should be a great afternoon, evening for you know for the whole family. I have, have another friend who's bringing you know a family of six to come see the show. So if uh, people are around and looking for something fun that everybody can do together and the show is you know entirely family friendly there's no there's no swearing there is one slight sexual innuendo that has <laughs> failed so, <laughs> yeah it's that kind of show and so it's can you voice. can no, you tell not. us <laughs> can you tell us something very ridiculous that happened to you when you're growing up riding show ponies yes well a lot of things did um one of, one of my favorite things, this is actually not in the show, but so it was me and a bunch of girls, basically, because that's who rides English. Yeah. And their favorite thing to do was to send me into convenience stores in small towns where we were showing, because to show, the girls would wear hairnets oh. and would also wear um, knee highs. Oh. So they would send me into a 7-Eleven in, you know, Alpharetta, Georgia, and make me go buy hairnets and knee highs <laughs> as a little 12-year-old kid. So that was fun. Um, and there was there was a ton of physical comedy in it too. I mean, I, you know, when you're a kid, do either you uh, either you guys ride? At all? I used to. Yeah, okay. I have so before. You, so you know, you know, yeah. when you're a kid and you're riding, you fall off all the time. Mm -hmm. And I fell off in so many different ways. I mean, I did the thing where the pony pulls, and you did a full somersault <laughs> off the, over, over the neck onto the ground, landed on the feet, you know, nailed the landing. Oh, probably oh, nine point eight. Yeah. <laughs> Six from the rush. Did you get a Did you get an applause at least? <laughs> from myself. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I fell off. I actually had. I was riding a little pony once, and a, and kind of the pony went like this, and the big horse actually jumped over us. Oh my gosh! 
and then I fell off. That's so scary. And basically, all of the most of the stories end with and then I fell off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, so how did you get into riding show ponies when you're younger? Well, my mom had ridden as a kid, and we had just moved to North Carolina, and she wanted to have something for us to do, and said, "Do you want to try this?" And I remember this really clearly. The guy who ran the barn. Um, I was sort of uncertain as a kid. I was eight, mm-hmm. so you know, I didn't know anything. And the guy who ran the barn said, you want to come meet the pony? And I said, that you would ride? And I said, sure. And he lifted me up and put me on this pony in the stall. And I just kind of sat there and I was like, oh yeah, I would like to do this for the next <laughs> 10 years of my life. Cool. And then we just kind of got into it and we started, uh, we started showing. And so we ended up, you know, every summer I w- we would travel around and compete at these horse shows. And, uh, drive around, you know, my parents were incredibly trusting. My brother at 16 and me at 13, yeah. you know, got the keys to the car and we went and drove around and competed at shows and, and uh, stayed in hotel rooms. And That sounds crazy. It was, a, it was a great thing. I think it's a great thing for kids if it's done, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're done well because, you know, being around horses, you have to be, kind of, you have to be calm, mm-hmm. you, but you also have to be strong. Mm-hmm. And that's something that not a lot of other things that kids do will teach you. You know, like karate is just like, ha ha, chop, chop, knock down. I'm sure I've been insulted the entire karate community. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've seen videos where like, uh, like I've seen cameramen being accosted by horses. There's like 10 horses surrounding this one guy and uh-huh. they're like, he's he just like has like feet in his bucket and he's just like literally just pushing the horses out of the way. They, these are like, like, uh, so like huge animals. Well, this, yeah. this is one of the things that I talk about in the show because you know, it, in the show I ask for a pony for my birthday, because I'm ridiculous, <laughs> and, and, I actually, and I actually get a pony for my birthday. And but what it turns out is, you know, it is I'm actually it's a pony that I know and am, am afraid of. And so one of the lines in the show is, my birthday present was a 650 pound animal that terrified me, <laughs> because I think there are kind of two there are two two types of people in the world. There are people who love horses, and there are people who have had a terrible story where they got bitten or they fell off or you know they were stampeded by a bunch of stallions, you know. So it's a, it's an animal that people have a mixed, mixed kind of relationship with. But uh, interesting. So what years did you do this? This was actually in the in the eighties. In the eighties. Um, so you get cool. some of the you know a lot of pop collars in the play. Yep. Um, a lot of great outfits. Yeah, some good. Oh my gosh. I had those, <laughs> cool cowboy boots. Oh my god! I had those bugle boy pants. So they're like super pleated out to here, and then super tapered oh. down to the ankle. And then you roll up the you roll up the cuff, and there's like a little pattern there. Wow! Oh. So good, and they're, they're coming back. Yes. It's so it's yes. it's exciting to me, honestly to see some of that stuff come back. He's also a comedian or a comedian and, and teaching a workshop this oh, week. Oh, cool! Oh, oh yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, on uh, Saturday from three to five at the Crystal Theater, I'm doing a stand-up comedy workshop, and it's just for people who have always. You know, maybe you're the funny one in your group, or you've always wanted to do it because it feels like something that's scary. You know, again, like horses, something scary that you want to kind of do. And and the goal of the workshop is to you know just get people on stage, see what it's like to be on stage, talk about you know writing jokes, talk about how to make an entrance, talk about how to string jokes together to make a you know seven or ten minute routine that you can do anywhere. I'm sure there are. Are there comedy clubs in Missoula? Yeah. Oh, there's a there's a comedy. Um, <laughs> Homegrown. Yes, yeah. there's, 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 there's a monthly it's being comedy spearheaded. show. It's just okay. starting to get really get some yeah. good momentum, and they do it. It's monthly. And they're okay. kind of the pitch. Yeah. Oh, are they? Really? Yeah. Nice. It's, it's pretty funny. Yeah, and so that that's workshop. That's Saturday at the Crystal. Saturday, three to five at the Crystal. Three yes. to five at the Crystal. I'm gonna come to that. So what I've are, always wanted to do stand up. Always. It's only twenty bucks, okay. and it's. Like it's just gonna be fun, you know, yeah. and that's that's the whole goal. It's not it's not to, yeah. That's, that, I'm not I'm not a kind of like yelling. You're not funny. Go home. You and know, what's kind of, what's one good thing fun. to remember when doing stand up, performing stand up? Like, what do you always try to tell yourself while you're up on the stage? It's really about connecting. Yeah. You know, getting on stage and immediately connecting with as many people as possible. I think of it as you're going on a blind date with the entire audience. Awesome. <laughs> and I like you that. have to and you have to be so that means you have to be you know if you have to stand up straight, you have to look, you know, how you would want to look. Yep. You have to be, you know, non threatening, hopefully hopefully friendly. Talk and you. you have to include everybody. Yeah. And that's really the the way to make it work. And yes, it's good to have funny jokes. 
but the comedians that people love are the people that they connect with. Right. And awesome. You, since you're doing your one-man show, it's it's going to be like a monologue that you've rehearsed over yes. and over again. So do you ever gear that towards a certain audience when you look at them? Did you try to like have a, like, you t don't tell one story and you tell another story to help? Yeah, emphasize? absolutely. I mean, it's going to be very interesting to me to do this at the ranch because some of the stuff in the show is kind of explaining some relatively basic things about horses and ponies, which those people are going to know. And some of that actually, we did our Taste of the Fringe last night, and I did a little 10 minute section. And you can tell in the room from how people are reacting that, you know, they, they know what I'm talking about here, so I don't need to explain as much. Or, you know, they, I can do, say something that may be a little more insider for people who know, who've been around horses their whole, whole life because the people that are on horses their whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a question of, of reading the audience and hopefully being able to react to what, what is going on in the audience. To some degree, I mean, because also, like you said, there is a script, and you know, I do have to get from A to Z somehow. And if I go off to Q prime over here, it can be hard to get back. Right. Yeah. So cool. one more time, when and where are you performing? So tonight, the whole event starts at 6 p.m. at Dunrobin Ranch, and then Friday, 6:30 at the Crystal Theater is Reserve Champion alone. Awesome. Um, Saturday, 3 to 5, you and I are doing the stand-up comedy yep. workshop. And then yep. Saturday at 8.30 is Reserve Champion again. And those are both, that's again, at the Crystal Theater. So. Awesome. Great. And, right. and of course, you know, everybody knows this, but you got to go and eat at Silk Road before or after. <laughs> we went there yesterday. It was so good. Was it? Ooh, oh, I haven't been there in a while. Oh, mm, yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah, you <laughs> you got to get back there. We had some, we had some fantastic food. So. Awesome. Right. You know that's my family's restaurant. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, yeah. oh, oh so <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Chris. Yeah. Oh, thank really you guys appreciate. so much. This was super fun. Yeah, we'll be right back with Chambers. Thanks. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. Your smartphone can help you find a bar. Alert your friends that you're in the bar. Update you on your team while you're at the bar. And now, let you know you need a ride home from the bar. Hmm, that is smart. Download blood alcohol calculators for your phone at plantolive.mt.gov. I'm Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hey, welcome back. Um, we are here with um, Chambers, Chambers and Michelle Rizzo. Rizzo. Yes, Rizzo. 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 Michelle is still here. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they're comfy couches. Why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, Stay here. Uh, 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 fall asleep, Missoula. Fall yeah, asleep. fall asleep, <laughs> Missoula. <laughs> Take a nap with Missoula. <laughs> but, Chambers, um, you are here to talk about a workshop with uh, acting for kids, right? Right. Um, in, I'm from uh, Nashville, Tennessee and Los Angeles, and I, um, I'm an acting coach in Los Angeles. Cool. And, so, um, and I'm known for helping young people with um, teaching them the Disney Nickelodeon style of auditioning. Interesting. So what's the difference between Nickelodeon style and Disney style? Uh, well, Disney is believable and big, and Nickelodeon is gigantic and insane. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have kids, like, practice getting slimed, well, dumped well, on one them? One more thing. So if I was like this, I would say, like, on, Dis on TV, I'd say, like, hi, how you doing? And then if I was on Disney Channel, I'd say, hey, how's it going? And if I was on Nickelodeon, I'd say, ha, 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 whoa, man, good 
good to see you. <laughs> wow. Makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. I'm awake now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had you on first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wake up, Missoula. Do a PSA for us. <laughs> <laughs> so you yourself, do you act? Yes, right. I am. Yes, okay. I'm, a, I'm an actor myself. I've been in 150 plays, 52 commercials. I've starred in uh, a number of television shows, and I was nominated for an Emmy for one of them. Awesome. Nice. Right, so that's my little career. And then, um, but, I'm, but I love teaching young people about acting, okay? And this year I was very lucky to be awarded by Backstage Magazine as the best acting coach in Los Angeles. Awesome. And so um, that's cool. That brought a lot of kids. And I've written seven books for young people that they use around the world. And um, so I'm doing a workshop at 9 o'clock today at the Crystal Theater and um, on how to audition for Disney. And then tomorrow I'm doing a workshop at 9 also how to audition for commercials because in this market, obviously, commercials are the number one thing kids need to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, like when I was a kid, probably the favorite, my favorite thing to do was to pretend, like pre playing pretend. It's when you were a kid. Listen to him. When yeah, I was right. a kid, you're, you're still pretending. Oh yeah, of oh, yeah. course, yeah. We just did a bunch of summer camps, and I guess our last summer camp is ends this week. So that's seven, eight camps for me. It's all like video, audio, video camps and stuff. So work with kids who have no idea and yeah, just kind of making something. Like a lot of fun. It was a blast. <laughs> yeah, it was, was a great, great time. It was a good time. We had yeah. a really good, um, yeah, good kids. turnout, good yeah. kids, for sure. Fantastic. Yeah. And so um, what's one thing that you, what's like a big thing that you try to teach children when getting ready for commercials? Uh, let's see. Well, um, the, the obviously in commercials you try to sell the product. Yeah. So if you don't believe in the product, you should not go to the commercial audition. That's the okay. first thing. Okay. So you have to mentally believe right, like in I, it. I, I don't sell, I don't do any um, tobacco products. Yeah, yeah why would you? Right. Because a lot of times people watching can always spot it a phony. A lot of times, you know. Well, they're not going to get the job. Right. They, you know, like, <laughs> the first thing they walk in, they say, you know, you like this product and you have to tell the truth. Okay. But sometimes actors can lie, obviously. Right. Yeah, you're an actor. But so, and so for a kid, so I, I help, help them and then I help them sell it and show them little tricks and I have a little technique that I use that helps the kids really get the thing together. So that's it. And, and I have coached over 5,000 actors and they've worked in, you know, for ABC, NBC, Nickelodeon, Disney on Broadway, hundreds and hundreds of commercials. And so. That's awesome. And how did you get into this? Well, uh, on my very first uh, day in Los Angeles, uh, I needed a survival job. Uh, and so I got a job delivering packages. And I had done a little coaching in Nashville, Tennessee. And so what I did was I got they tested me out by making me deliver one package to Beverly Hills. And so I went to Beverly Hills and I got ready to deliver this package. And there was a 10-year-old boy s sitting next to his house crying. And I'm like, why? So I was from Tennessee, so I cared. So I, <laughs> so I go, why, why are you crying? He's like, I have to go to this coach for acting and I hate it. And so I said, well, let me help you with your lines. And I helped with his lines. And his mother walked outside and said, who are you? And the kid said, this is my new acting coach, Chamber Stevens. He comes to your house. And the mother said, thank God, I don't have to drive. Do you charge the same as the other guy? And the 10-year-old said, yes, he does. And the mother went in and wrote a check. And so I then went back to the place, and I didn't get hired because I took too long delivering the packages. But I wrote my name number on the top of the guy's lines, and the agent called and said, hey, the kid booked the job. I told you that coach was fantastic. And the mother said, oh, please, we didn't use him. We used Chamber Stevens. He comes to your house. And the agent's like, fantastic. And I had five clients the next day. Oh, my God. And that was 25 years ago. That's wow. so and great. So it was what like, in a story. spiritual sense, I was meant to be a coach. It just had to happen. Yeah. Literally. Just literally fell right in your lap. Bam. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> awesome. What a great story. Yeah, I think so. that's my favorite story I've heard all year. Yeah. That's a good one. That's yeah. That's a good so, one. So, so now I'm also doing the one person show. That's why okay. I'm really here. Yes. yes. Tell us about that. It's Zootown Fringe. And this it's a show called um, It's Who You Know. Okay. And being a coach and being, living in Nashville, Tennessee, I mean, I lived right next to Barbara Mandrell. Roy Orbison lived down the street from me. Johnny Cash was a sponsor of my Little League baseball team. <laughs> and, so, and also, I have run into lots of crazy celebrities, some incredible, some literally insane. And this, my show, has this kind of interesting premise in that there's cards all over the stage, these big cards with all these famous people's names on them. So what I do is I shuffle the cards every night, throw the rest of them on the floor, and every same time you come in, I pull one in and I tell a different story from them. So uh -huh. you might, the show that's going to be on uh, Sat Friday will be totally different than the show will be on Saturday. Cool. Wow. Can you give us a story? I'll give you the short, one of the shortest yeah, stories. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, let me see. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, great. Yes, let's hear this. <laughs> Once right. gave my eight-year-old son a comic book that Shia had written. <laughs> on the joys of smoking. 
And so, what was one of the best things about smoking from Shia? <laughs> yeah, <I> know, <laughs> <laughs> my son was like, "What?" The <laughs> <laughs> like people, like I can see people in Missoula going to the public library and going to the children's area and that dragon rug and just reading. Shia LaBeouf wrote this. Right, right. I love him. What was that? What was that book? I mean, he just and he signed. He goes, "Oh, you might want to sign it too." And he's like, "Okay." Well, well, yeah, great. <laughs> Like he, he seems he definitely like like he seems like he's going places for sure. He like he's just at the point where he's gonna do something just really good. Does something really crazy. Oh, let me tell you, it's I, just like I, I, I'm Shia. a huge fan of Shia. Are okay. you? He's a wonderful human being, but he lives on a different planet than yeah. all the rest of us. And so he, you know, he didn't see anything as strange as <laughs> choice of smoking. But he's just like your kid. I wrote this. Dude, I remember when he was a kid actor, like when yeah. he was doing the whole show on Disney Channel. Even Stevens. Even Stevens. Did he really? Oh, that's funny. He was crazy then as a yeah. kid. I love like, that show. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I do have to ask you, um, have you ever met Jennifer Aniston? Because I love her. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any stories about her? <laughs> well, um, well, my story about Jennifer Aniston is, is, is kind of sad, but not because of her. It's just because of something that happened with the person that she was dating at the time. Mm -hmm. That person passed away. So. Oh, that is uh, sad. That story, when that story comes up, it's kind of sad to tell that one. But I just love her so much. That's why I had to ask. She was very, She's very She's flawless. Kind. Yeah. God, nice. she looks great, too. Yeah. <sighs> Very cool. And so I have stories on Leonardo Slept DiCaprio, her. I have stories on uh, Julia Roberts, and you know, just like Tom Cruise, all these people. And so you never know when they're going to happen. And yeah. obviously, Johnny Cash, and you know, and even a story on Elvis. And so stories like that happen, and they just kind of come That's out. great. Leonardo DiCaprio was here, actually. And he, yeah. he, was, he was just hanging out with Toby Maguire. Cool they went friends, to friends, um, went to Paza. Yeah, Paza Branch is the, kind of like the experience, the Hollywood experience up in Montana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, and so they just stayed there and part and then came to Missoula and drank went coffee here and market. went to a farmer's market. <laughs> market. Yeah. Yeah. We found our favorite chocolate here. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Addicted to chocolate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Leonardo it's just Capra funny. And share, have the same chiropractor. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Except I go to the office to get mine, okay? And Toby and Leonardo have an ongoing poker game that they play. Okay? <laughs> and the chiropractor goes to the poker game. Oh, and that's hilarious. Just their necks in around the table. And weird. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so, you, you do a lot of workshops. Uh -huh. I mean, like, how long are you going to be here in Missoula for? And then I'm what's here the next? whole week. Okay, I have a lot of places to eat. Yes. Okay, I started with the Silk Road last night. That was fantastic. <laughs> I'm a snob about international food. Unbelievable. <laughs> like five different kind of categories of different kind of places. I was like, it was fantastic. Good. And I'm going to eat at the Notorious B.I.G. I'm sorry, I can't be Sally's. Oh, Notorious P.I.G. A P.I.G. P -I -G yeah. I'm going to eat there. That's fairly new. Okay. That is I fairly tried new. It. Right. And I'm going to go to this place down the street. There's like some kind of. You're oh, going to have to go to Burn Street Bistro for breakfast. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. Like, that's really good. Yeah. Do you guys know Holly Sorensen? Do you guys know who that is? No. She's a wonderful producer. Um, and um, she is, she told me I have to go to Oxford. <laughs> but only go at like three in the morning go, after you've been no, downtown. Go at four in the morning. Yeah, three. Get, a, get like three. eggs. Two. And they have grease from basically when you were born. Okay. They yeah. keep the same grease on there. That sounds perfect. From when you're like, oh, mm. go to, this reminds me of when I played Little League. <laughs> go to the, yeah, go to the Rose, go to Charlie B's, and then go to the Oxford. See, I'm searching yeah. for more sandwiches. Oh, this is mine, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yes, this is one of your posters. This is my thing. Clark. Flyers. Yeah. And Great. anyway, um, I... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking always for more and more stories. And then after this, I leave and I go to St. Louis, um, Memphis, Nashville, Charleston, and Atlanta. This wow. is the first day wow. on that tour. Wow, that's awesome. And so how long is your tour going to be? Um, it's probably going for a whole year. And um, I hope you I, don't have any cats. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> one thing I'm worried about, though, is how am I going to find a better producer than this woman? Oh, thank you. Oh. Yeah. I mean, she is like just... An angel, you well, know what I mean? That's I mean, one great thing about Missoula is that everyone here is really down to earth and really connected with each other and with Missoula and like with the artists. Yeah, it's we're, Missoula is not too big to be mm -hmm. disconnected, but we're um, just very big, community, just small enough. We're humble. It's or, a community. Yeah. yeah, Missoula is probably one of the most fun places you perform. Yep. I would think. Yeah, but well, I'm like really looking Spread forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Spread the word. Yeah. yeah, I will. Definitely, I will. Okay, so then, one more time, when and where are your shows and workshops? Okay, so my workshop is tomorrow, it's today, at 9 o'clock, in one hour, and that's for Disney, and in uh, another hour, I'll, I mean, next day, I'll be doing the commercial workshop, and then my shows are Friday and Sunday, and um, when are they, Michelle? 
Sorry, it's in 15 minutes. Is your oh, 15, minute, 15 minutes. 15 minutes my workshop is. And, um, workshop? My, and my show at the Crystal Theater is... <laughs> oh, I have to look it up, too. Okay, look it up. It's on Friday okay. night and on Saturday. Saturday. Two shows on Saturday, one on matinee and one on um, that night. Awesome. Nice. Great. Yes. Well... Just go eat a silk rose, and then I'll go out and then into the, there, and I'll say, "Hey, it's time for my show to start," and you can come on in. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. Zootownfringe.org. Yes. That. Well, um, Chambers will let you go so you can get to your workshop. Okay, thank you. So, so meeting you too. Yes. Thank you very much. And keep up the good work with all the kids. I love that you guys are doing that. That's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Pass but it we will be right back because we're going to chat with Michelle a little bit more after this PSA. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Child abuse is more common in Montana than people may realize. I'm Montana Attorney General Tim Fox. You have the power to report suspected child abuse. Call 1-866-820-KIDS. This message is brought to you by the Montana Attorney General's Office, the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services, and Northwestern Energy. Come on, guys. Rolling? Good. When hiking in bear country like this, it's important to remember your essentials, like bear spray and knowing how to use it. Liam, where's my bear spray? Uh, I put it in the bottom of your pack. I didn't mean... How am I supposed to get it quickly? <laughs> When adventuring in bear country, remember, bring bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups, make noise, and don't run. Be bear aware. Hello, Hello. we are back, and if you haven't picked up one of these yet, you, they're available at MCAT. At MCAT and, and, and the venues. The so yes. the first venue, um, Chambers is doing his very first workshop this morning at yeah. 9 o'clock, so he's probably rushing there right now. Yes, he um, So we have uh, Michelle on here. Yes. And yeah. she's here to talk about more about the fringe. Yeah. So there's so much going on this whole week, yes. and, you, and um, just on the top of your head, um, basically, what are the start times for the, the days of this week, pretty much? Wow, they're varying. <laughs> they're varying the day. Throughout the day. Yes. In fact, my mother-in-law's um, at the senior center today, nice. starting at ten, with story keepers, where she's going to teach people to tell their stories and how to keep them. Um, they're st the verbal stories. Oh, stories. wonderful! Yes, and vibrant, and um, and uh, then there's piano performance after that. So if you're um, interested in joining our um, senior population here in Missoula for lunch, I recommend <laughs> it. And um, so then, the, like the big stuff starts happening tonight at five thirty. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's four different things going on. That's great. And you have so many performers, so many acts, yeah. so many talented people. Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. even like. Um, and they also do doing workshops, which is great because right. it's always nice that you know you see a person perform, and then that, that's really it. You know, it's just like you see them. But the nice thing about Fringe Fest is that uh, what you brought to it, especially, um, is that the workshops. Like yeah. you get to you know work with the artists and be like, well, how do you do this kind of stuff? It's like, well, with anything, like any workshop can tell you. Which I've been to so many different workshops for so many different things. Is that you just got to keep doing it. If you love something, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. The really great thing about yep. the Fringe is that it's a cohesive community. People want to help raise and support each other and um, the Fringe is really well known for that. Yeah. And, um, there are over 200 Fringe festivals around the world and you can do the circuits. And, That's um, awesome. With us this week is um, the San, uh, San Diego Fringe Festival director, Kevin Charles Patterson, and he would be here tonight but he's tired. Or this morning, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's here to help us uh, lift up our Fringe Festival, which will make his Fringe Festival stronger. Yes. And um, we can collaborate in the future on how to do um, that things in a more cohesive manner. So, um, yeah, that's all very exciting and and. Yeah, you'll, and I, you'll meet him. You'll meet him if you come to some of the yes. yeah. And I think that is important too because um, this one specifically is the last one that you're doing for Missoula. Yeah, well, I actually moved to Bozeman okay. already in March, so it's been very difficult for me to um, do this uh, from a distance. So I'm not quite sure if I'm the person to continue doing the fringe here. So we're hoping that there'd be somebody to step up and take on inherit. This, this wonderful thing that, that Missoula has going on. Would you possibly move it to Bozeman? Um, no, add it to Bozeman. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sure. add, I, would, I would not take the fringe from Missoula. I would not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the possibility of creating another one. And, mm -hmm. and that is, I'm not going to say no. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so tell us about some of your sponsors for oh, the Fringe yes, Fest this thank week. You. Yeah. Um, of course, we couldn't do it without not only the actors and the audience members, which are vital, but also the venues and um, the uh, sponsors and um, and the volunteers. And I just want to. I can't name all the volunteers right off the top of my head, but thank you so much, and it means it's so meaningful. So, um, Cynical and Jaded is our for the third year our largest sponsor. The Silk Road, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Love them. My husband has been very influential in creating the brochure, and it's Exit 360 Creative. The green light room has been very, very. Oh, hi, Kevin. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, here. yeah, we can bring out Kevin. Come in. in, Kevin. Yeah, come on, just come oh, on in. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Oh, like, we'll just keep it, like, keep it raw. Okay. Keep it real. Oh, okay. Okay. It's live, everyone! So, wake up Mozilla Live. So this is Kevin. So you are the San Diego's director of Fringe Fest? Yeah, the right? founder wow. and the executive director. Man, you, we so were you founded all Fringe Fest? No, no, no. No, no, no. no. San, San Diego. Diego. Okay, okay. No, okay. okay. I, was like, oh. I just like had a heart attack on the air. Like, that'll wake you up. You started this in 1947. You look great. Okay. So, Kevin, great. Tell us. Oh my us. gosh, I can't believe I just walked in. Yay. I just. <laughs> Welcome. Well, You're first live. Of all, oh, hi. Wake up. Hey, um, okay, Kevin. I totally just woke up. Uh -huh. Just woke up and zoomed down here. Oh, they look all cute. And, and so, tell <laughs> us about how you started the San Diego chapter at Fringe Fest. Um, gosh, I wish I heard more of what you had already talked oh, about. Oh, I haven't talked about it at all. Nope. She just said that you're here, and we may be able to meet you. Yeah, but I, um, before I get into mine, what you have even talked about for we're just um, a lot of them were just rehashing everything they were doing, and she's just finishing up talking about the sponsors. Mm -hmm. She just talked about the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and her husband. She's just about to talk about her husband. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we can stop that for a second, and you. We can finish up the sponsors, and then we can. Okay. Yeah, yeah so and then we'll get into my stuff later. Sorry, keepers, because we use their nonprofit. Um, Great. To be to uh, an umbrella, Mazulian, and the independent, the Trail Tamarack, MCAT, yeah, KDGA, yeah. Kettle House, <laughs> find and um, on I, the back of the brochure didn't happen, but um, uh, MazulaEvents.net also a big Love stuff over. and then there's um, the Good Food Store, Stensry Playhouse. I mean, it just the list goes on and on. Missoula Community Radio. Um, you can go on our website and see more of the. Um, uh, Abe Abramson. Who What's your website? Rochelle Basel. Um, Zootownfringe.org. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, Kevin, back to you. <laughs> oh, yes. okay. um, how did I start our festival? Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell the truth. I got in, I, I was a dance teacher and a choreographer. I own my own performing arts school. And I got in a major car accident. Broke my hip. Mm. Doctor said you need to figure out something else to do. <laughs> so um, I found out about the Fringe platform, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this can be something that's amazing for the community. Um, it boosts the local economy. It can um, help artists, help venues, along with boosting the economy, um, help surrounding businesses. It's a fantastic um, thing for the community." So. As soon as I found out about what Fringe was, I wasn't really clear, um, I jumped on planes. Plural, planes. <laughs> and um, I flew all over the effing place. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to find out um, exactly how it could work in our community. And as I go to different cities, to different countries, I was like, whoa, this can be huge. It really, yeah. it's, it's an amazing thing for the community. And one thing about the festival is that it's um, the most awesome vehicle or platform for helping artists. And then when you start to talk about that, for some people that might not be into the arts, uh, you could be cutting them out. But the truth is, that fringe can be so broad, it can be so big that it really is something can, that can kind of interest anybody. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain until it gets thrown into the community and is introduced. That's awesome. So, I, from what I'm getting from Fringe, it's a collaboration of art and entertainment and mm -hmm. um, education for all. For all, yeah. Yeah. Totally. And so, yeah. what are you hoping to do here? What are you looking for in Missoula while you're here? Um, Lady, I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I do the <laughs> I know, trust me, I know. <laughs> now, um, for, for me to travel, 
I'm spreading the word of our festival, mm -hmm. but then also by me being here with Michelle, I'm able to create bridges from San Diego to Montana. So if I have an artist that's interested in um, getting out on the road uh, or getting their show out for more exposure, I can say, well, Michelle actually has a venue in Missoula mm -hmm. and we can throw you in there. That's awesome. Uh, it, it's uh, creating a bigger network for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's why I are yeah. you um, performing or um, doing any workshops this week at all? Here? No. No. Just judging. No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no. I'm just doing our social media. Oh, great. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Well, I will be. Okay. Yes. Once he wakes up, you got to get some coffee in here first. Yeah. yeah you got to get me on that. That's You're going to so take some pictures and then you're just going to tweet. It's like, yeah. this is what they're doing in Missoula. <laughs> yeah. There's Smokey over here. Uh, uh, there's this guy. Oh, there's a river over there. Oh, he was on our, um, in our fringe a couple years ago. He was talking about this and now he's talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, um, this is Missoula's uh, third, year. third year as French yeah. Fest, and it's only grown. It's totally grown this year, because I remember when you first started to work on the French Festival yeah. back in the day, and it was, it was, um... 50 performances. Yeah. yeah. Last and, year was 70. Oh, that's awesome. So it's a little bit smaller this year. Just that's okay, more, though. You know, remote. it's also remote. a little bit more intimate, and you have more time to see all these performances, mm -hmm. too. And so it starts Thursday, right? Today. Today. Today's, Today's Wednesday. Wednesday. Today's no, Wednesday. actually, it started, it started yesterday. yesterday. It started yesterday. Yeah. Tuesday. And does it go, when does it end? On it's Sunday. Last day. Okay, it's Sunday. Sunday. The last performance oh, cool. is at 7. Awesome. Mm -hmm. On Sunday. And there's also a movie being shown at the... Top hat. Wow. Okay. Okay. This guy film. And then so about an artist. What's your favorite venue to check stuff out at for French I Fest? I can't do that. Okay, I that's true. You can't do that to your your ex. I love them all. Your ex. No, I meant venue, not yeah. like artist. Uh, I, yeah, I, I know. I can. I can ask good. that. But you could say one that you find interesting. I'll tell you one that I think is okay. interesting. Um, because I'm an outsider and it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, uh, um, there's a show, I think it's tonight, down at the ranch in Lolo. Mm -hmm. Down at Evan Ranch. Yeah. That's unique. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Chris was just Chris on Beeler. earlier. So I'm not yeah. saying I'm, I'm uh, choosing this over that, but uh, t for me, uh, Southern, who was raised in Southern California, the idea of going to see a show on a ranch sounds so cool. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so different from what you're used to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Instead of going and sitting in a theater and... Well, one of the best things about Montana and Missoula especially is that, you know, we're Western Montana. Missoula has got a lot of culture in it, and it's not like Montana. Missoula is like 30 minutes away from Montana. That's what people like to say. Other people in Montana make fun of Missoula for not being a Montana town. Yeah, but yeah. we also have. <laughs> but we also have the like. We also have the like. The you know like in a, a kind of like a rural aspect of it, but not exactly rural. But we've got so you know like rural, the horses, just like, go, or, like farms, um, like five miles that way. Wilderness. We got the wilderness and the you know the yeah yeah, yeah I know it's early. But yeah. we are running out of time. So one more time, where okay. can people find okay. more information okay. and. And it's happening starting last night, yeah. all day, this all week until Sunday. So um, people can go online and they can look at Pick what's... Pick up these. The PDF online is really beautiful. Our printed programs are black and white on the inside. So go to ZootownFringe.org. Zootown and then, uh, Kevin, where can people track you down and talk to you if they want to ask questions? To, to SDFringe.org. For San Diego okay. International Fringe Festival. Nice. Awesome. Great. Oh, well, thank you for joining yeah, us. Yeah, you guys, thanks. Yeah. This has been really great. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm so glad I woke up. Wake up, Missoula. <laughs> you are on Wake Up, Missoula. <laughs> oh, wake up. I'm awoke. Uh, <laughs> I'm awoken. <laughs> we should have had Chamber Sun first, like you said. Wake everyone up. <laughs> well, that concludes Wake Up, Missoula. Um, I want to thank all our guests for coming on our show. Michelle, this is, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We are excited for Fringe Fest. And, um, don't miss French Fest. No. It's happening all week and it's happening everywhere. And it's ending on my birthday this Sunday, 23rd. Give oh me presents. God. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I'm Noel McVoy, and we'll see you guys Wednesday, Friday. <laughs>